The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. On All Saints Sunday, we remember the saints who have gone before us even as we include ourselves within the community of saints. A blessed community bound together through time and over and against death. Just last week, Anne Marie and I were talking with our confirmation students about saints. We took a field trip from the youth room to the narthex, just beyond the glass doors of our sanctuary, and talked about the saints whose symbols are on the shields that hang there. We talked about apostles, people sent into the world with good news and about disciples, the people called to follow Jesus. And we said, you know, the community of saints is not an ideal community, consisting of perfect and sinless people, where there's no need of further repentance. If you go and examine those shields, you'll count 12 of them, because even Judas, who betrayed Jesus, is included among the saints. Learning that God loves us, redeems us, and makes us holy or sanctifies us, even in our imperfection, is a gift of our faith. We aren't saints because we're perfect or blameless. We are saints because in God's sight, we are wonderfully created, beloved children of God. And even when we are petulant or selfish, God offers us forgiveness. We aren't saints because we can overcome our grief or be stoic survivors of trauma. 
We are saints because God and God's Son, Jesus, are above every power, victorious over grief and suffering, and victorious over the brokenness of sin. We aren't saints because our hearts grew three sizes, and now we can forgive the people who hurt us. We are saints because God's mercy is new every morning. We are sinful, and every day we turn away from God and inward on ourselves, refusing to confess our dependence on God. But God never refuses his grace, and God never gives up on us. That is good news. God is steadfast and abounding in love and mercy for you and for me. With the confirmation students, we also talked about the people in our lives who have helped teach us about Jesus. Often it's a parent or a grandparent. But sometimes it's a neighbor or a family friend. I tell the story of my college roommate, Lori, who invited me to come to campus ministry with her. And I think our children probably remember Miss Nancy. She was a woman I, with, that I worked with and who also taught our one-room Sunday school in a tiny congregation in Harpers Ferry. So on this All Saints Sunday, I wonder who are the saints you have met in your life? We gather as living saints today because others have poured out God's love in their care for us. And we gather as the community of saints because we remember God's promises for us. In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul reminds the people there, people who are facing trouble and persecution, that they have already set their hope on Christ. This hope empowers us to imagine the future that God is preparing, to see not only with our eyes, but with what one pastor calls the eyes of our heart. The hope we have in Christ helps us see beyond the divisiveness of the world now and see each other as God's beloved children. To see each other as fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image. It is a hope that reaches beyond any one of us and is nourished here in community and in relationship. There's an old Hasidic tale that talks about a disciple who went to his rabbi and asked about the meaning of community one night while they were all sitting around a fire. And the rabbi sat in silence while the fire died down to a pile of growing embers. And then he got up and he took one out of the pile and set it apart on the stone hearth. And soon enough, it was dark and cold, having burnt out. We are created for community. And it is in community that we can sustain our hope. In his letter, Paul encourages the disciples at Ephesus to return to this enduring hope that is grounded in God's saving power. He reassures them that God is at work in and through all that they are experiencing. Having put all things under his feet, And Jesus embodies this same hope when he delivers his sermon on the plain in Luke's gospel. 
Instead of ascending to a mountaintop and making pronouncements from on high, Jesus comes down into the crowd and he meets the people there. Apostles and disciples and curiosity seekers alike. He heals people's illnesses and casts out their demons and he talks to them about their lives. When Jesus makes the declarations of blessings and woes that we hear in today's gospel, he isn't talking abstractly. He has witnessed the grief and the hunger and the sorrow and the ways that some are ignored or cast out. These are vulnerable people who come to Jesus with their hearts laid bare. And Jesus meets them in their need. His woes aren't curses against the people who are satisfied with their lives as much as alarm bells to awaken complacent people who have become comfortable and convinced that they don't need God. Jesus calls them to be as vulnerable as the rest of the crowd, to recognize their own deep need for God's love. Because it is in Christ and in God's loving action for us that our hope resides. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your son Jesus who shows us your love for all people. Thank you for redeeming us from our sin and counting each one of us among your saints. As we follow Jesus, give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and help us live in response to your love for the whole world. Amen.